Okay, this is the last part of moments. Um, and we've basically done this before, okay? This topic that we're looking at here is a very, very similar one to the ones where we had questions like this. Um, maybe this is a better example. Where we had things just like resting on the floor and we said that there was like friction of something, like resting on the floor. The only thing that's different is that these ones are no longer resting on the floor, but instead they are hinged at the floor. So um, the, the only thing that we need to think about with a hinge that's different is that the forces have sort of changed their name a little bit. Now, if this was one that was um, just resting on the floor, we would have had the forces. I'm going to have to obviously name the forces properly in a second. But we would have said there would have been some weight. What other forces would there be if it was resting on the floor? There would be a reaction force and there would be friction, friction which looks like it would have to go to the right because that one's going to the left. OK, now you may have remembered me saying this at the very beginning of this topic. This is not a, um, a one that's resting on the floor. It actually says that it has its end being smoothly hinged. Hinged is like down the side of a door, like these things are the hinges, OK? It's just something that means it's fixed in place. So it's not going to slip along the floor here. All it's possibly going to do is this. I'm going to like hinge it with my foot on the floor here. It just means it can just move up or down like this, OK? That's all that it means that it can do. So what we do is we no longer call this R and mu R, but instead we call the reactions that are here, we call the vertical reaction Y, and we call the horizontal reaction X. No prizes for telling me why it's X and Y. Obviously, it has to fit the directions of the, the, the axes. Yeah, Ismail. So how can we be on the right and horizontal? Because it's like, it's not going to slip like it's on me. Yeah. How, it's not going to be right, so how can we be on the X? So this is, this is the, that's a really, really good question. Actually, what it's feeling is if it's hinged where my foot is here, there is not a normal reaction to the right and a normal reaction up. Actually, there's a normal reaction that is like this, that's over here. There's a diagonal normal reaction because it's pushing into the hinge at an angle. So the hinge is pushing back at that angle as well. But we can't deal with this one because I don't know what angle it's working at. So what I'm actually doing with this value of r here is I'm saying, well, I'm going to break that r down into an x and a y that actually is behaving like this. Here's r, here's x, and here's y. How do you think I can find out what r is? Pythagoras. I can do Pythagoras to x and y. How do you think I can find out the direction of the normal reaction at the hinge? I can do trigonometry. I can do Sokotoa. So we take this normal reaction and we split it into an X and a Y like this. There are going to be some questions in the future where you might not know if X and Y are going in this direction, but you just put them in a direction that you think is right. And if you get a negative value for either X or Y, it just means that your arrow, which was maybe pointing to the right, should have been pointing to the left. Or your arrow that was pointing up should have been pointing downwards if you get a negative value for that one that we have. So I'm going to just do this question that we've got here and see what happens. So we've got a uniform rod of mass 5 kilograms. So I can change the weight there now to 5g. And length 4 metres. So I can say that this is 2 metres and this is 2 metres. Has its end smoothly hinged at a fixed point. Hence me adding in x and y. I'm going to leave r there. Mm, no, I'm going to get rid of r because I think it's going to get in our way for a moment. But we know that we can use r if we have to. It will, it will come back later on. And it says the rod is held in equilibrium at an angle of 25 degrees above the horizontal by a force of magnitude f newtons applied to its end b. The force acts in the vertical plane containing the rod and in a direction which makes an angle of 40 degrees with the rod as shown in figure one. Find the value of f. So to find the value of f, I'm going to take moments. Yeah, Hamza, what was your question? Um, I think before I even want to find out what I think cause to find f, I think I can just take moments about here straight away. OK, yeah. So I'm going to just take moments about the bottom of the rod, which is A to begin with. And this is going to be a little bit trickier. Um, so I'm first of all going to deal with this 5G one. Now, there's the direction of the line of force, and there's the point. So I'm looking for this distance that's running along the bottom here. So if I draw that triangle out, 
good. That's, this is the distance I want, so it's going to be a 2 cos 25. So when I take moments about a, it's my force multiplied by 2 cos 25. And that is going to be equal to the force multiplied by its perpendicular distance. So I'm going to make the force a bit of a longer line, like this. And I want to know the shortest distance from here to the force, which is going to be this distance. And that's meant to be a right angle. I haven't drawn it particularly well, but it's meant to be a right angle. So if I draw that triangle out separately, the hypotenuse is 4 and the angle is 40. Which of these two sides do I want, the opposite or the adjacent? Opposite. I want the opposite. I want the distance between the point and the line of action of the force. So I'm looking for that distance. And that distance is? F times 40. Or 4 times 40. No, it's f times 4. So yeah, sorry, sorry, you're right. Yeah, the distance, you're right. The distance is 4 sine 40, and the force is f. So it's going to be f multiplied by 4 sine 40. 40, because that's the angle for that one. It's slightly different. So when I work this out, f is equal to this divided by this. So we've got 5g times 2 cos 25 divided by 4 sine 40. And we get that f is 34.544133. I'm just going to leave that as a number in case I need it later on. And then I'm going to round it to 34.5 newtons to three significant figures. OK, now we're going to try and find out. Yes? So I was going to say, what if you resolve um, f to make it, uh, what's the word? Same thing. Uh, vertical. Yep. Would it work if you did that? Yeah, it would work as well. Have you done it that way? Uh, yeah. Did you get the same answer? I mean, I didn't finish my part OK, no, 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 it should, it should work. But we're going to have to do some resolving with f in a second, because we've already taken moments. We've only got two other things left. So maybe when I resolve it, you can see if it's working with the way that you did it. OK, so we're now, this is quite strange. It's asking us to find the magnitude and the direction of the vertical component of the force acting on the rod at A. So what's it asking for? Is it asking for us to find x or y? Or is it asking for us to find r? Y. It's asking for us to find y, OK? The vertical component of the force is y. Well, why the hell is it asking me what direction it's going in? Nope, it's not, because that would ask me about the, the reaction at the hinge. Whoever's talking, you know, don't need to be talking at this time, because this is very, very challenging. If there's a question about it, we can talk about it in a second. Um, what do you think it's meaning about the direction of y? What did I say earlier on? It could go up or down. OK, if you get a negative answer from my diagram, it must be going downwards. If we get a positive answer, then it's correct. It must be going upwards. That's because, at the moment, we don't know if the f bit going upwards is bigger than the 5g. We don't know what, the, what these things are in relationship to each other. So I'm going to now do this bit, and I'm going to try and split the f force up. Now, in order to split this f force, it looks like it is a horizontal force and a vertical force. So you can no longer use the 40 degrees that we have there. Now, if this is 25, what's this? 25. This is also 25. So what's this? 15. Good, so this is 15. So this one running along the left here is going to be uh, F cos 15. And this one running along the side is the important one that I need, is F sine 15. Does that make sense why I have to use 15? We did something similar in the last lesson, didn't we? Where we had it was, um, we had like a funny angle and we had to split it to get one that was horizontal and vertical. Yeah, yeah, it was that. Now, when I'm scrolling down here, I'm going to do for part B, if I resolve in the up and down direction, because I'm interested in what Y is, I have that Y plus F sine 15 equals... 5g. So y equals 5g minus f sine 15. And f is 34.54 blah, 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 sine 15. 
So I'm going to find out what that is. So it is 5g minus f sine 15. And I get that y is 40.1 newtons to three significant figures. Now, because this is positive, y is going vertically upwards. Because, imagine I came up with an answer that was negative, it would have meant that y would have had to be going in the opposite direction as that one that we've got there, OK? So 40.1 newtons, because I got a positive answer, it means my diagram was drawn correctly. If I got a negative answer, my diagram was drawn incorrectly. It only wants us to find the magnitude and direction of the vertical component of the force acting on the rod at A. Yes? Is that statement necessary to get an Yes, because it asks for the magnitude and the direction. So you have to say whether it's going up or down for this particular one. Now I'm going to do something that's not included in this question. I'm going to make up part C of the question, and it might say find the magnitude of the normal reaction at the hinge. So I'm going to ask something extra. I'm going to find out the normal reaction at the hinge. So far, I've only found out the vertical component of the normal reaction at the hinge. So what else do I need to do? I need to find out the horizontal component. Now, when you look at the diagram, it looks like x is equal to what? Uh, Good. These ones here are the ones that are horizontal. So x is equal to f cos 15. So let's just do part c together. We might as well add in this bonus question. So when we resolve left and right, x is equal to f cos 15. And f cos 15 is 34.54413 times cos 15, which is 33.367, blah, blah, blah. Now, we've just worked out that it has an x component of 33.367. It has a y component of, I wish I'd written that out in a bit more detail now, 40.1. So the overall normal reaction is the combination of that x and y. It's the combination of the vertical and the horizontal one, which means... I'll Pythagorize them. So I'll do that plus the 40.1 squared. I'll Pythagoras to this. So I'll do Pythag. And I get that R is equal to 52.1 something, which I'm just going to, on the safe side, I'm going to say is 52 newtons. I'll do it to two significant figures, just in case some of my rounding errors have crept in. So I'm just going to keep it as 52 newtons instead. OK? Could you also find out what the dire direction was if you had to? Yeah. Yep, you could do Sokotoa, you could do 40.1 divided by 33.367, and you could do the inverse tan of that to find the angle down here, and then you could say that it's an angle above the horizontal, okay? So I'm going to do one more of these, and then that's us done on this topic. We're just going to spend the time doing practice. Can I go on to the next bit? Okay, so... This is fun. Sorry if we go maybe a minute over, but this is a big, a big question. And then you've just got a few more to try, OK? No, now. It's, 50, it's quarter two. I'm not going to sit here for 15 minutes. OK, here we go. A beam AB of mass 20 kilograms and length 3 metres is smoothly hinged to a vertical wall. So now we're hinging to a wall rather than a floor uh, with one end at A. The beam is held in equilibrium in a horizontal position by a rope of length 1 metre. You're gonna, you guys are going to love this one. One end of the rope is fixed to a point C, uh, which is vertically above A. The other end of the rope is fixed to the point D on the beam, so that the angle ACD is 30, as shown in figure 2. The beam is modelled as uniform, and the rope is modelled as a light and extensible string. Using the model, find the tension in the rope. OK, so there's a few things that we haven't added. It's the fact that the mass is 20. Everything else, I believe, is sort of on the diagram. So if the mass is 20, I'm going to be able to add on here that this is 20g. There are some other forces that I need to take into account here. What are the other forces? T, there's going to be tension. Which direction is it going? It's going away from it because we're considering the beam, OK? So there's the tension. And there's some other forces too, bearing in mind it's a hinge. No friction. Pardon? 
X, Y, good. So there's going to be an X component here, and there's going to be a Y component here. Now, I don't actually know if it's going to be a Y component up or a Y component down. It's very hard to imagine. Is this beam, is it poking into the wall and pushing upwards like this, or is it poking into the wall and pushing downwards? It's, it's kind of difficult to know. So we'll have to just do the calculations and see if we get a positive or if we get a negative. Yes? How do you know if the, like, how do you know if X and Y wouldn't be just like rotating? So it would be Y that's going up and X. So if you had it like this, do you mean like this and like this? Yeah? I'm just, I'm just asking, like, why is it Y instead of X? Just because that's the Y axis and that's the X axis. You could call them reaction one and reaction two, but I call it the X reaction because it's going in the X direction, X being the X axis. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah. That's all right. It's fair enough. Um, the reason that we don't do them as like angled like this is because we then can't put them back together using Pythagoras. OK, so um, this one is a bit tricky to find some of the distances here. I'm looking at this being like, uh oh, what are we going to do? So what do you think is going to be the best thing out of moments resolving and resolving to find the tension? Moments. Where from? A. Why? Because then you can cancel out Y and X and you have Very smart. Away. Good. If we take <laughs> if we take moments about A, we get rid of X and we get rid of Y. Which is great because I'm trying to find out what the tension is. So let's do the easy moment about A. What's the easy one to do about A to begin with? The weight. The weight. Twenty G multiplied by one point five. Here comes the tricky one. We're trying to find out the perpendicular distance from the tension to the point. So there's the line of action of the force. The distance that I want is this distance so that they're perpendicular. No. You could resolve it out if you want to. So we can, do you want to resolve it out? But the, so you can resolve out, if you do physics, you know that you could just resolve this T-force, which probably might be an easier way of doing it. Should we just do that? Yes, yes. You could do it with distances. You'd have to find out what the length of this side is. The length of this side is sine is cos 30, and then it would have to be cos 30, and it's the opposite. So it'd be cos 30 sine 30. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, but you don't know what this distance is. It's fine. It's fine. I'm gonna. I'll show you the way. We'll. We'll do it. The, I'll do it the physics way first. But. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna resolve this T force into a T force going up, and a T force going across. So this one going up is what? If this is thirty here. T cos thirty and T sine thirty. OK, when I take moments, which of those two can I ignore? The T sine 30 can ignore because it's going in the same direction as that point there. OK, it's actually coming out the bottom of it like this. So that T sine 30 is not going to do anything for us. Now, I need to find out my force is T cos 30. But what is this distance here? Bearing in mind, that is 1 and that is 30. Sine 30 is 1 sine 30. So it's just sine 30. So that's the force, and that's, time, that's the distance. Do you want to see the way that I would have done it? No. Yeah. OK, the way I would have done it is <laughs> if we had that this is 1 meter, and I was trying to find out this distance here, and I know that that is 30, from the big triangle, I know that this distance here is cos 30. So then I have a new mini triangle that looks like this, where that's a right angle and the hypotenuse is cos 30. And I'm looking for this distance here. Oh, this distance is cos 30. Cos 60. Uh, wait a second. Cos 30, cos 60. Or if this is 30 up here, cos 30, sine 30. Yeah. So that's why I've got cos 30, sine 30. And I would be multiplying it by my force, which is t. That's two steps, though. This is also two steps, what you did. What? You had to resolve it, and you also had to find that. So to find out what the tension is, I'm just going to do that divided by that. 
and we get that the tension is whatever that is. So that's 30g divided by 678.9639, which is 600. And 79 newtons to three significant figures, or 680, and that's the right answer. <sighs> the direction of the force exerted by the wall on the beam at A. Okay, so we now need to find out the direction of the force exerted by the wall on the beam at A. We need to talk about these reaction forces. So I need to find out what X is, and I need to find out what Y is, and I need to combine them together. So if I resolve right and left, it looks like x is equal to t sine 30. x and t sine 30. So it's just that multiplied by sine 30, which is just a half. And you get that x is 339.48 newtons. If you resolve in the up and down direction, you get that y equals, sorry, you don't get y, y equals, plus. you get y plus t cos 30 equals zero. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Not equals zero. Equals 20g. Sorry. So y equals 20g minus 678.96 blah, 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 cos 30. So y equals, oh my god, that times by cos 30, and you do 20g minus 678.96 cos 30, and you get that y is equal to minus 392. So what does that tell me about my diagram? Y is in the wrong place. So actually, what it is, it's this. There's 20g, there's the tension. We think that actually it's coming down with 392, and it's going across with 340 x, x and y are like that. So when it now says, find the direction of the force exerted by the wall on the beam at A, we are now going to draw our diagram where x is going across at 339.48, y is going down at 392, so the direction is this angle here, and theta is the inverse tan of the opposite divided by the adjacent, which is 339.48 uh, divided by 392. So the angle is 41 degrees below the horizontal. And I've said that to two significant figures. We've got to push on. We're nearly there, OK? I can't do this in a two-part example, but it's, it's big. If the rope were not modelled as being light, state how this would affect the tension in the rope, explaining your answer carefully. Who thinks they can tell me about that modelling assumption? I've mentioned it before. Ms. Kane? The tension is not evenly distributed. Good. The tension is not going to be equal throughout. The tension will not be equal throughout. Because it says to explain your answer carefully, we might need to explain why. What could we say? What tension? Where might the tension be bigger? At the top of the rope or at the bottom of the rope? No, at the top, because it's having to, it has to support its own weight at the top. So the tension will not be equal throughout. It will increase towards the top of the rope because it has to support its own weight. Go on then. Because it has to support its own weight too. Okay. The rope is now removed and replaced by a longer rope which is still attached to the wall at C, but is now attached to the beam at G, where G is the midpoint of AB. The beam AB remains in equilibrium in a horizontal position. Show that the force exerted by the wall on the beam at A now acts horizontally. The wall, the, the, what? <laughs> so angle is zero. Oh, 
So okay, read that last the yeah, so it says, show that the force exerted by the wall on the beam, so this force that we're talking about over here, only acts horizontally. In other words, look at these x and y here. What do we think will happen if it's only acting horizontally? Gonna y is zero. zero. But it's a two mark question, and I'm trying to think what's the best way to do this for two marks. Show that the force exerted by the wall now acts horizontally. So I'm going to have to draw a diagram again. We're now on to part D of the question. We've got a diagram that looks like this. We've got the rope coming to the midpoint. Yeah. We've got the 20G happening here. We've got the T happening here. We've got Y here, and we've got X here. And we're trying to show that this is going to all work out fine. Um, mm -mm -mm. No, but there's only two marks for this, so there's got to be a quicker way of doing this. Let's think. There's a, okay, I've got the way of doing it. That's the shortest way of doing it. Um, it's to do with moments. Can anybody think? They've called these different points. I think this one is A, right? Was this A? Yeah. This was B. This, the middle one was G. Do you know why they called it G? Any reasons? Yeah, good. It's the center of gravity. It's the center of the mass. It's a moments shortcut. Can you think of the best place to take moments that would show me that y was equal to 0? A. No. If you take G. G is the best place to take moments, OK? If you take moments about G, everything is 0. Yeah. Why? The only force that we have. So this one. This T force is acting through G, so it would be a zero. This 20G is acting through G, so it would be zero. This X force is acting through G, so it would be zero. The distance between Y and G is 1.5. So when we take moments about G, we get 1.5Y equals zero. So we just get that Y equals zero. Hence, reaction force is horizontal. Done. Finished on that topic.